All right, so today we're going to try to unpack this Bible of Karate. Mm -hmm. The Bubishi. Okay. Um, you're diving into its history and philosophy. Right. And those legendary fighting techniques. Yeah. We're talking excerpts from the Bubishi, mm -hmm. the Bible of Karate. And you've even got forewords in there from karate masters. Oh, wow. Like uh, yeah. Nagamine Shoshin and oh. Otsuka Tadahiko. Wow, some big names. They call it a secret text. Right. Revealing the true essence of karate. Yeah. Intriguing stuff. Yeah, what's remarkable is the Bubishi isn't some ancient scroll tucked away in a vault. Right. It's more of an anthology. Okay. Possibly compiled during the Qing Dynasty. Okay. Drawing from various Chinese fighting styles. Yeah, okay. Particularly White Crane Kung Fu. So it's less of a single author, yeah. more like a collection of martial arts wisdom. Precisely. Okay. And within that wisdom are clues about how the Bubishi journeyed to Okinawa. Mm -hmm. One theory points to Higashiona Kanryo, okay. a name that resonates deeply in karate history. Absolutely, Higashiona, pivotal figure. Yeah, oh, wow. it does. Each figure connected to the Bubishi's journey adds a layer to the story. Okay. Kusanku, the enigmatic Chinese martial artist who visited Okinawa, right. Sakugawa, the well-traveled security expert, mm -hmm. even whispers of tea merchants playing a part. Wow. This makes you wonder, why was this knowledge shared so discreetly? Yeah. What was it about the Bubishi that made it so important to protect? It's like a historical mystery with the Bubishi at the center. Yeah. And speaking of mysteries, okay. a poison hand technique. Right. Is that for real? The Bubishi does delve into Dimmak, okay. what some call the delayed death touch. Right. It's presented very matter-of-factly, uh -huh. listing vital points and techniques. Okay. It's important to remember yeah. we're examining this information purely for historical context. Right, of course. This is a text from a very different time. Definitely. And shifting gears a bit. Okay. The Bubishi also goes in-depth on herbal remedies. It does. It's fascinating how it blends these healing practices with fighting techniques. Absolutely, the inclusion of these remedies, yeah. including one called Medicine Worth 10,000 Gold Pieces, shows how the Bubishi wasn't just about fighting, right. but about achieving optimal health and vitality, okay. even longevity. Mm -hmm. It reflects a holistic approach to martial arts we rarely see today. It really makes you think about how ancient martial arts viewed the body and mind as connected. Yeah. So we've got secret techniques, historical intrigue, ADD ancient remedies. It's all in there. For someone just starting to explore the Bubishi. Yeah. What's the key takeaway here? The Bubishi is a window into the past. Okay. Showing us how martial arts were practiced and understood centuries ago. Mm -hmm. It reminds us that karate beyond the physical techniques right. is rooted in philosophy, history, and a deep connection to the human body. It's like they believed in a more complete approach to martial arts. Blending physical prowess with mental discipline and a deep understanding of the body's energy. Exactly. And one of the most fascinating aspects of this yeah. is how ancient martial arts approached strategy and timing. Okay. For example, the Bubishi mentions adapting techniques based on the time of day uh -huh. and an opponent's strengths. You're talking about the 12-hour theory, right? Yeah. That's a concept you don't hear much about in modern dojos. You're right. It's rarely discussed. Right. But the Bubishi connects this 12-hour theory to the flow of ki. Okay. Or vital energy. Okay. Through the body's meridians. Okay. So before we dive into that. Yeah. For those who aren't familiar. Sure. What exactly are meridians? In traditional Chinese medicine. Okay. Meridians are like energy pathways that run through the body. Each meridian is associated with a different organ system right. and has a specific role in maintaining health and balance. So the Bubishi is suggesting that these meridians yes. and the flow of qi within them right. can somehow be used in combat. That's what they believed. That's incredible. So we're talking about harnessing the body's energy in combat. Right. How does that actually work? The Bubishi suggests that different meridians are more active okay. at different times of day, right. making certain areas of the body mm. more susceptible to attack or injury okay. at those times. So ancient martial artists were essentially using a combination of anatomy right. and what we might now call uh, okay. biorhythms yes. to figure out the best time to strike. It's a fascinating concept. Yeah. And this concept wasn't just about offense. Right. The Bubishi also includes 
herbal remedies tailored to specific times of day. Okay. Based on which meridian is most active. Right. So it's all about restoring balance and harmony to the body. Exactly. It's about understanding those rhythms and working with them. That's right. Because we see the Bubishi talks about this 12 hour cycle. Yeah. What's the significance of that? Each two hour period in that 12 hour cycle is yeah. named after an animal. Right. And each animal corresponds to a specific meridian. Okay. For example, the rat time is from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Okay. And it's associated with the gallbladder meridian. So if I'm facing an opponent during the rat time, yeah. should I be aiming for their gallbladder? It's not quite as simple as that. Okay. The bubishi emphasizes right. understanding the interconnectedness of the body's systems. Okay. Striking one meridian could have a ripple effect, uh -huh. weakening other areas. So it's more nuanced than just a chart of when to strike. Exactly. Okay. The Bobucci suggests that these effects mm -hmm. could be amplified or diminished depending on the time of day. Right. It's about exploiting those subtle windows of vulnerability. Right. But also about understanding yeah. how seemingly isolated strikes or injuries mm -hmm. can impact the whole system. I'm starting to see why they called the Bubishi a secret text. Right. There's so much depth to this knowledge, so much to understand. That's a lot to unpack. But hold on, if ancient martial artists were so focused on timing and strategy like this, yeah. why don't we see as much of that in modern karate? That's a really insightful question. Yeah. Over time, as karate evolved and spread, oh, the emphasis shifted more towards standardized techniques okay. and competitive sparring. So something was lost in translation as karate became more modernized. You could say that oh, yeah. the subtle nuances of the 12 hour theory, yeah. those intricate connections between time energy and the body, mm -hmm. became less prominent in mainstream practice. So, what does that mean for someone studying the Bubishi today? That's a good question. Are we trying to rediscover a lost art? I think the Bibishi offers us a valuable, okay. but ultimately optional perspective. Okay. The modern martial artist has to decide for themselves how deep they want to go with these ancient concepts. It makes you wonder what else might have been forgotten or overlooked yeah. as martial arts evolved over the centuries. It's a thought-provoking question. Right. And it speaks to a larger theme we see in the Bubishi, yeah. the interconnectedness of not just the body, mm -hmm. but of history, philosophy, and physical practice. Speaking of interconnectedness, we've talked about how the Bubishi describes using this knowledge for combat. Right. But it also talks about healing. Yeah. Could you elaborate more on that? Absolutely. The Bibishi's approach to healing emphasizes understanding the body's natural rhythms. Okay. And using herbal remedies to restore balance. Okay. It reflects a holistic view of health and well being mm -hmm. that was prevalent in ancient Chinese medicine. It's fascinating how the Bibishi brings together these seemingly disparate elements. It is. Fighting healing philosophy. That's right. Even a touch of cosmology with the 12 hour cycle. Yeah, you see all these different threads woven together. There's a lot to take in. It certainly is. And it speaks to the richness of the Bubishi as a historical text. It's not just a fighting manual. Right. It's a window into a whole different way of understanding the body and the world. So we're seeing this theme of interconnectedness pop up again. Yeah. If the Bubishi views the body as this network of energy systems, right. it makes sense that they'd apply that same thinking to both fighting and healing. Precisely. Right. And what's intriguing is that the Bubishi doesn't just talk about this in general terms. Okay. It gets incredibly specific. Right. There's a section in the PDF that lists precise herbal prescriptions oh, wow. for each of the 12-hour periods okay. tailored to support the meridian that's most active at that time. So they were essentially using the same principles, yeah, the same understanding of the body's energy flow right. to both fight and heal. Exactly. It does make you wonder how much of that knowledge was actually put into practice right. and how effective it really was. It's a question that likely doesn't have a simple answer. Right. But what we can say is that this holistic view of health and well-being right. yeah. wasn't just some ancient superstition. Okay. Modern research has actually shown that our bodies do operate on circadian rhythms. That's right. Our sleep cycles, hormone levels, exactly. even our digestion, it's all influenced by these internal clocks. Exactly. And those rhythms can influence everything right. from our hormone levels to our immune function, mm -hmm. which ties directly back to the Bubishi's idea Okay. that different 
parts of the body are more vulnerable at different times. It's like this ancient knowledge passed down through generations mm -hmm. is being validated by modern science in some really fascinating ways. It is fascinating to see those connections. Yeah. And I think that's a key takeaway from the Bubishi. Okay. It challenges us to reconsider our assumptions about martial arts mm -hmm. and perhaps even health and wellness in general. So as we wrap up our deep dive into the Bubishi, okay. what would you say is the most important thing for our listener to remember? The Bubishi reminds us that there's more to martial arts than just physical prowess. Okay. It's about understanding the interconnectedness right. of the body-mind and even the natural world. Mm. It's about respecting the traditions that have been passed down to us, okay. while also being open to new discoveries and interpretations. It's about appreciating the depth and complexity of this art and recognizing that the journey of learning is never truly over. Well said, the Bubishi is a treasure trove of knowledge. Yeah. And even though we've only scratched the surface, you've gained a lot of insight to consider as you continue your exploration of martial arts. It's been quite a journey from secret fighting techniques to herbal remedies and the mysteries of key. It really has. I think this deep dive has given us all a lot to think about. Indeed, and who knows? Yeah. Maybe this will spark a renewed interest in these ancient practices, mm -hmm. encouraging us to rediscover the wisdom they hold. Now that's a challenge I think our listener is ready to accept. Thanks so much for watching. We spend a lot of time putting these videos together. So if you like what you saw, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and give this video a like and a share to anybody you think might like it. And if you have any thoughts or suggestions on the video, go ahead and leave a comment. We make sure to read them all. Thanks, and see you next time.